This time on Junk Bucket Garage, we're gonna finally get back to work on the 66 GTO convertible. One of the non-junk cars in Junk Bucket's garage. So first things first, let's pull this thing out in the sunlight and get a good look at it. And we'll do the $2 walk around tour and I'll just tell you about it for a second. And then we'll get started on the problem she's having and what we're gonna do to fix it. So there's the instrument cluster, that's all been completely restored. So, my dad picked this up in a field, oh, I don't know, 30 years ago. This this old tail light panel was smashed in on this side. This quarter panel was destroyed pretty well, smashed in all back here because this tire, the axle had snapped and this tire came off and went through there. Ground all the bolts down, ground down all the four links. I rebuilt everything. It's all the original rear end and all that. Um, I got it from him because I just pretty much said, hey, you know, that 66 GTO is one of my favorite cars and you're not doing nothing with it. So why not let me do something with it? So I got it from him. I've been working on it for 10 years now, I believe. Maybe more, don't know, just washed it. It's already dirty. I did a full frame off restoration, body on a rotisserie that I built everything to bare metal, powder coated, everything, sandblasting, all that stuff. Everything down to bare metal. I did all the paint. I did all the body work. I do everything. I did all the motor work. And it's shiny and it's scary. Definitely wants a good insurance before we go driving it. Uh, a couple of things that I did do is front and rear sway bars. Um, a quick ratio steering box, four wheel disc brakes. I want to be able to go down the road and do this as well as this. You know what I mean? You got to be able to turn under the bonnet here. I got so this is a 389 four barrel two speed automatic car. It's got a turbo 400 three speed in it now. Um, that is the numbers matching, or that's the original block. Uh, I have the original heads, all that numbers matching stuff. Um, right now it has stock rotating assembly with forged lightweight pistons. It's all been rebalanced, remachined. Uh, some good Kaufman racing aluminum heads, single plane intake from Kaufman, uh, cold case electric fans, MSD, and I hid that back there behind the battery box. And this is a factory air conditioning car. So it has the tall core support that you cannot find anywhere to replace. And this one was a little banged up, so I re-metal re worked it and put it all back together. I got all the AC car baffles in everywhere. Uh, you can see the ones that go behind the bumper there. And one thing that I did do when I put it together is the volume of the combustion chambers on the heads are the same combustion chamber volume as the original heads so that they could be put back on later for some reason if it ever needed it, which it won't. I would never plan on selling this car. Some things that it needs, it needs this pad that goes under the hood. I'm having a pinstripe put on it. Front and rear bumpers. All the interior, except for, of course, the instrument cluster. That's all new. Um, the top frame has all been sandblasted and powder coated. It just needs a top put on it. And uh, that's pretty much it. Just that pinstripe bumpers and the interior. Um, 
I've already been driving it, which I shouldn't do because it's not insured yet. But that's the Junk Bucket 66 GTO convertible. And it is a handful. It is fast. So here's what we got going on that we're gonna start working on today. This car, I'm sure you heard, has a cam in it. It's, uh, oh, that's another thing that's been done. It's all retrofitted with the hydraulic roller cam. Just so I didn't have to break in a flat tap it. But that big cam is not producing enough vacuum to run that. And I've tried little electric vacuum pumps and vacuum things and nope not gonna do that because the sound of a vacuum pump makes me want to murder small animals and uh, we need to figure out a way to fix this so I got power brakes again because I'm gonna drive this everywhere this is going to be if not my daily driver, my every other daily driver. Because like I said, this is my dream car and it's almost ready and there's no sense in just letting it sit. It'll go to car shows, I'm sure, and swap meets and things like that, but it's going to drive to them. It's not gonna get trailered to them. I like to save these old cars, like that junk bucket Torino out there and this Model A over here so that I can drive them, not so that I can show them to people. Well, that means we gotta figure out this brake situation. I don't know if you've ever experienced this before. I'm sure you heard that if you put a big cam in your motor that the vacuum at idle goes way down and then vacuum accessories don't function correctly. Well, what this'll do is when you pull up to a stop sign, it'll work fine for like two seconds. And then you gotta stomp on the brakes to get it to stop. So it kinda tricks you. It makes you think, oh, these brakes work great. And then they don't. Well, it's got power steering. So we're going to utilize this power steering system to make power brakes happen. And you can tell I've had it for a minute because of all the cobwebs, but that's what we're gonna do right there. That's a hydraulic brake booster, and it's supposed to be a kit that easily goes right into this car and uses the hydraulic power from the power steering pump and makes your brakes hydraulic power. And then you don't have to worry about vacuum. Hmm. I have a feeling this is gonna be harder than it looks. But we're gonna get it done. The main thing is, is anytime you work on brakes, that brake fluid destroys paint, takes it right off. The good news is water, water uh, renders brake fluid inert. It cleans it off, stops it from activating and reacting against the paint. But uh, I just wanna be really careful not to get any brake fluid on any of my sweet paint job. And, of course, it is 450 million degrees right now in Northern California, so, <sighs> yeah, let's work on a car in the sun, sure. Mm -hmm. Step one. It's already loose. One accomplished. Now what I'd like to do, I think the first part of this process is I'm gonna leave this master cylinder connected to the lines and I'm just gonna undo the master cylinder from the booster, pull it forward, contort myself up here under the dash and disconnect it from the brakes. Here's something that my cars usually don't need. Fender cover. 
pretty. So here's a good time to tell you, all the brakes on this car are from Right Stuff Detailing. And I haven't had a problem with anything. It's all been really good. I even ordered some rear disc brakes that didn't have an emergency brake. What do you call that thing? Lever, handle, brake, grabber, emergency brake on it. And uh, I just sent the calipers back, paid the difference, and they shipped me new ones that had it on there. They've been really great, and everything on this car so far is A1 top okay. Well, I just popped that master cylinder off of there, and this stuff's all pretty still new. Um, it moved right out of the way, no lines bent. Everything looks good, but look at this. What's that now? That sure looks like rust to me. And it smells uh, not, not pleasant at all when you put it on your finger and sniff it. Hmm. I'll be darned. Maybe it's a good thing we were uh, looking in here, huh? You're right in my way, man. I can feel the odor. There that is. Hey, I was looking for that. I just took this down the road, too. Good thing I didn't lose it. So now before I get the rest of those four bolts out, I need to get to this pin right here and just, it's pretty easy. It's just a clip you pull out and then this pin slides out and get this off of the brake pedal. So when I get those last two bolts off, I can move that out. What is this? What is this doing in my nice car? That's not supposed to be there. There's that out. Now we'll get that new hydraulic one in and we'll be able to see where our hoses all need to go. Okay, real quick before we put this in the car, we wanna check a couple of things. And since we have this out, we can start right off with those. One thing you gotta know is this depth of this pin here and this pin here. So we'll measure those. They look like they're gonna work, but a lot of these master cylinders and boosters and there's, there's a bunch of different ones. And uh, you just wanna make sure it's the same depth from this face here, or this face here. And then the other thing is not as important uh, with this particular setup because it's completely adjustable. I got this turnbuckle here um, with this retrofit disc brake setup uh, and it'll just thread right onto this bar and I'll just make sure that the distance from this mounting face to this pinhole is the same. So this kit comes with hoses, a bunch of connectors, didn't come with that. And I see that one of these little hose clamps is missing, but I just dropped all this stuff on the floor. So it's probably on the floor somewhere and I just couldn't find it. Uh, this is supposed to be everything you need. We're about to find out. But I did notice that it didn't come with the provisions to connect this to the brake pedal. I'm assuming that's because you're supposed to reuse the stuff here. 
the only thing is this isn't factory GM stuff. This is right stuff detailing. It's universal type stuff. Uh, maybe they tell you you're supposed to buy that separately and I just didn't realize it. I don't know. Anywho. I do like that it's black. So first disaster averted. We had to get down in there. Uh, that plate didn't fit right. Oh, got arm in there. That plate didn't fit quite right. So I'll show you what I had to do. And then this bolt, this little bolt down here <clears throat> that holds the steering column in place was actually hitting the bottom of that plate. So what I ended up doing or have, had to do was uh, I had to extend these upper holes out toward the edge and then these bottom holes were pretty much just like these top holes. I had to slot those and then grind a whoop in the bottom there to clear that bottom bolt. And now this plate fits. So now it's time to paint it black and put it back. I just got some gloss black paint. I'm gonna put a little self etching primer on there just so it bites into that bare metal spot. So I'm not gonna coat the whole thing. I'm just gonna get a good coat of it on anywhere where there's bare metal. Paint black, paint it black. We're going to paint black. Come on, turn around. Just like it was made that way. Painting things and doing stuff. Well, now's the time when I have to admit my mistakes. First of all, this isn't a mistake, but I'm puppy sitting. Look at that little guy. Second of all, and here's the mistake. I can't find any of the paperwork or instructions for this, for this thing. It's so long ago that I bought it. And then I started working on other projects and I probably took the paperwork in the house and looked at it one time and then lost it forever. So I don't know which one of these is pressure in, which one's pressure out, which one's return. Don't know. <clears throat> uh, I do know where I bought it from, which was Performance Online. And this is sort of their universal 66 to 67 A body, you know, Chevelle GTO stuff. And when I look on their online, it shows that this is supposed to come with this bracket that angles it up and mounts to the firewall. And I don't have that. It's been so long that I can't return it, I'm sure. And I, all I need are the instructions on how to plumb this. I can't return this power booster, so I'm going to zip these brackets off of there and then mount them directly onto the firewall and then mount them onto that plate that I just modified that probably never needed to be modified and then all the angles and dangles and things should be exactly the same as when this was on there so yeah I mean when you do it yourself sometimes you get ahead of yourself but we can fix it here so I did a little look on the interweb and sure enough the 66 Chevelle GTO A body kits come with these angled brackets I think the kit that I bought was just kind of a universal kit and it didn't come with these well it's been too long for me to return this and instead of just ordering stuff and waiting forever I went ahead and ground these rivets here off and I'm going to try to just pop these brackets off of here and reuse them that'll work right Sure, sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do.
fires today, people. California's been on fire enough. I know that these fit on there because they were already on there. At least that's the hope. So now what I need to know is do they fit on this now that I've modified this. Let's see. Yeah. No. Should work. Didn't need to do any modifications to that. Just did it for no reason. Sure. So now that I've done a bunch of unnecessary work, we can put this back together since we never had to take it apart in the first place. So as of right now, it's not fitting. It's really close though. I think if I just loosen those bolts that are on the pump side, I can get a little bit of wiggle out of those brackets and slide it on, then tighten everything up once it's in place. So if you were watching closely, I'm sure that you caught what I missed, which is I had these brackets on the wrong way. They were on toward the outside like that. But here's the problem. This big old nut that holds that down on there, it's holding that off that much from matching those bolt holes. If I can get that nut to turn to where it's lined up on these flat spots, I think I can get it, but I don't think that's gonna work because that's tight right now. And <clears throat> there's no way it's gonna tighten that much more and I don't wanna loosen it. So, I think I might have to either grind a little hole here, or cut a little hole here to clear that, or grind on this nut. But I don't know yet. So I got these notches cut out here so that it'll fit over this big nut that holds the hydraulic booster to this plate. And that fits now. And these bolt holes line up, except you can see now I got a little meat on the, on the top of that one that needs to come out and on the bottom of that one that needs to come out. <sighs> More work.
massage them on those bolt holes on the other bracket. And then it's time to paint these black. Something you'll want to pay attention to is when they got this gold iridated coating on them, paint's not going to really stick to that. You got to get most of that off of there, <clears throat> scuff it up really good, and use a good etching primer, or your paint's just going to do some weird fish eye and thing. All right, we got them all cleaned up. We got three or four dollops of self-etching primer on them. Let's, let's change them colors. Well, while I'm waiting for the paint to dry on those, I'll get a couple of things ready. The first thing is the old system had this boot on it that mounted up flush to the firewall and kind of sealed that hole. And it didn't go past this nut, so I just used a pair of calipers here and measured how much I needed to take off and cut that off with a razor. So that should be the right distance now where this just has pressure against it when this is all mounted and it seals that hole in the firewall. So it's all back together. This little doodad seems like it fits. It's even got little protrusions that kind of pop into those holes right there that help hold it in place and they line up so I mean I guess I cut it right it's kind of squished a little bit in there but that's okay let's see if it goes back on and then once we get this on and bolt it in we can start doing that thing where we plumb everything that doesn't sound like fun been a little proactive about it and I've removed the battery in the battery tray. I've hid some relays under there. But just give me a little more room for my sandwich clamp to get to all these hoses. I measured how long this arm needed to be. But I forgot. I think it was six inches. I set it at six inches. If it's not right, we'll so Everything's bolted back in. That uh, sealed nice and tight up against the firewall. I don't know what I'm doing with my tripod. Okay, so here's a small problem. It looks like this is a little longer than the old vacuum type booster. And my brake lines aren't allowing enough movement to get that master cylinder back on. I can probably pull on that and get it over there and set it on and, and, and make it work. I hope, maybe, no, probably not. I'm gonna try that real quick. Uh, I just hope I don't have to remake all of those brake lines. Here we go. thing I do got to say is this looks like garbage whatever they did they painted or whatever they did there they left orange peel and they didn't clean it very well and I'm sure most of these are some Dodge van units that they core charge and then rebuild them but they could have done a better job cleaning that up 
Now, the fun part, or what I thought was gonna be the hard part, plumbing. What I'm gonna do is, uh, first thing I'm gonna do is get something down inside this power steering pump tank and suck out as much fluid as I can, and then break that lower line loose, try to catch as much fluid as I can. I won't reuse any of it, I just don't wanna get it everywhere. And then get these lines off, out of the way, my main concern now is making sure that this is a nice, clean installation. And I just don't think there's any way to hide all of these hoses. I see I got a hole there. I can make some kind of strap. I could strap onto there and like kind of have them hanging off the fender like they did from the factory with the heater hose. It just kind of does its thing and then chills with that little strap right there. Maybe I'll have something like that happening over here. I got a hole that I can use there and one that I can use there. All right, I used my where did I put it? Okay. I used my gear oil pump to pump most of the fluid out of that reservoir. Don't drink that. What a mess. Now, we gotta figure out what all these things do. And these things. So I gotta go do some math and spell checking. Figure out what all this stuff does. I'm working on some routing here. And I got these nice AN line fittings that go in everything. And that's all really cool stuff. Anyway, this is kind of what I got going on here. I'm going to try to get all three hoses that have to run kind of in a bundle here. And then maybe I can pin them there with a little loop and a plug or something. And just make that look a little neater. Um, I'll be happy with that routing. Uh, everything else is just kind of mocked up into place. Nothing's tightened down. This is kind of a weird configuration because you got to get your return out of this pump and your return out of this pump. Or box. This box and this box. Both need to somehow return back to this port. And so you got to have a T in it here. And I'm thinking this is the best way I'll hose clamp that hose after I cut it off to there and then it'll just be a short hose between these two nipples that'll hose clamp. Unfortunately that means I'll have that T kind of hanging out right here. Now it's a matter of cutting these lines to length. They give you, like I was saying earlier, they give you these neat little ends. So you cut your lines to length. Well, just throw stuff everywhere. Then these come apart like standard AN fittings, but they're high pressure stuff. So once you cut your hose to length, this screws onto the end of the hose and then lubricate that and it screws right back down into there. And that makes a nice solid hose in. So the routing of that line right there looks really good, except that it don't go there. <sighs> sure, it has to go to this side. This is the hose that has to be on this side. Which of course just makes it look worse. That just pushes it up way too high, I don't like that. It almost looks like it's going to hit the hood. It's on almost on top of my master cylinder. I think it's just going to have to go to this side. Now 
we need to make this hose this long. And this high pressure stuff is kind of like AN. It's got some steel braiding in there. So you're not going to cut that with a knife or some hose cutters. My preferred method of doing this is with the wheel of death on a grinder. Now I haven't done this much of this fabric outside. Most of mine is stainless outside. And when I do that, I wrap it with electrical tape. Then I cut through the electrical tape and that tries to keep everything together so it's easier to get the end on. What I'm going to do is make a test cut without the electrical tape and just see what it looks like afterward. Then maybe I won't have to use that tape. And the first thing you want to do is take this end apart. The cap goes right over your line, your hose, and it just screws down. Okay, you got that all the way in. Now something I like to do, just to help everything go a little smoother, is lubricate that a little bit. And then that threads right in there. And then you snag that up with a wrench, snag that up with a wrench, and tighten that all the way down. One hose. One custom length hose, ready to go. I'm going to spray a little bit of, we'll probably brake clean in there. And then uh, blow that out with compressed air. You can see on the end there, it's already got some fudge on it. There's already some gunk in there. So I'm gonna spray a little brake clean in there. Every one of these after you make them up, spray a little brake clean or something in there to clean them and then blast them out with some compressed air. You don't want any of that getting in your system. So I got one hose in. It looks pretty good. One thing that I didn't expect to be an issue, and it was a pretty big issue, is these 90 degree fittings. This hose doesn't twist. If you try to twist it, it just, it rolls up like you're trying to, you know, make a spiral. So when I measured this hose, I didn't take into account that that 90 needs to be pointed. Once it's all assembled, it has to be pointed in a certain direction. And uh, I guess what I'm going to have to do on the next one is mark a mark on each side of this connection of these two pieces so that when I screw this one on, that mark is aiming in the right direction. That's the only thing I could think of because I had to pretty much take this end back apart and clock it and fiddle with it and I pray it don't leak, but I did not take that into account. So let's get another line made up. I'll try marking it. Hopefully this one will go better. I still got to put my return line in and I want to make sure that this hose has enough slack to get to this hole where I can put both of those lines together and mount them to the fender well. So now I got the mark on the end of my hose and I know from paying attention that this white lettering needs to be pointing away from my 90 degree bend in order uh, for that to fit right. So what I'm gonna do, and hopefully this works, I'm gonna tighten this down with my fingers. That's as tight as it ever gets on the hose. And then I'm gonna mark the back of it right there. Like that. So I know that the back of my 90 needs to be up against these white letters. So when I screw this first piece on, I'm gonna line that mark up with, this back, with these letters. Then when I put my uh, insert piece in, it should tighten down and be pointed in the right direction. Hopefully.
Okay, so it's pretty close. I'm gonna just suspend that until my mark is aligned with those white letters. I know that needs to be the back of my 90. And that line my markup just right. Hopefully it fits. my hose clamp all right everything's hooked up i gotta be honest with you i mean it's cool i like it it don't i don't meet my ocd i mean if this would have been a tighter 90 or even you know even tighter than that it could have ran over here with this hose this barb for the return could have been just a 90 degree barb and then it could have plugged in from the bottom and this hose wouldn't be sticking up. That might be something I'll change myself in the future. Um, down here, everything's good. Nothing's touching the header or the, 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 the exhaust or the head, which is good. These uh, power steering systems are usually pretty tight I actually think these 90 degree uh, fittings that they have on the ends of their hoses fit better than the factory just bent tube like that there where it's just a, a tube with a bend in it. That didn't fit very good. It was actually really close to hitting the manifold and that fits better. So I'm happy with that. All in all, We'll see. I got to tighten up those three on the return T. That could have, I think, been a little better thought out on their part. It's a universal kit, though, so they make it where you can use it on different vehicles. And the hoses are all cut to length. Nothing's measured. It's not a lot of work. I could have saved myself a lot of work if I would have thought about just putting those brackets on instead of mutilating that plate that came with it I'm gonna say I don't like the hoses laying against my inner fender well I don't know what to do about that if you got any ideas let me know as of right now it's just it is what it ain't but that's something that GM did I mean look that's how they routed their heater hoses they just laid them on the fender well so they didn't have them painted all shiny either they were all just black well, i'm going to tighten up those little fittings on that on that t the hose clamp on the return to the tank and then the hose clamp on the return from the booster and then we'll put some fluid in this and start it up and see how many leaks there is i'm going to say that if my brakes feel good and work good this system's a total win. All right, I poured some fluid back in it. Now we're gonna fire it up. We'll let the fluid circulate. I'm sure we're gonna have to add some more, but most importantly, we're gonna check for leaks. Let's put this on just in case. I gotta put the battery back in. Watch for explosion.
I did forget to hook that brake pedal up to the master cylinder though. So there's that. Okay, so we topped it off. I got the brake pedal hooked up. I don't see any leaks. I'm gonna fire it back up. I'm gonna touch the brake pedal and see what happens. But the car off, that brake is solid. sucked a bunch of fluid down that is probably pretty low again so I can look in there and see the guts that means it's pretty low power stirringing fluid that's it let's see if I can do this without dumping it everywhere
vacuumed it out before I drove it. After, after action report, this thing stops, like, right, the, oh, man, there's so much stuff flying around in there. <laughs> this thing stops right now. I mean, it, it does the stopping thing. Four-wheel disc brakes with that master cylinder, uh, master cylinder, with that power booster running off the steering pump, it's just got brakes forever. I measured the pin sticking out of that power booster and compared it to the power booster I took off and they were the same depth. So I didn't do anything with that pin that goes in between the master cylinder and the power booster. I think though that when that built hydraulic pressure, it pushed that out a little farther. And so I am having a small problem that the brakes are too right now. Yeah, I mean, it's it's like, I ain't kidding. You push the brakes and it doesn't mess around. At least they work good, right? But you don't want them to throw you through the windshield every time you touch the pedal. Uh, I'm gonna do two things. The first thing, I'm gonna take that rod that actually connects to the brake pedal and I'm gonna shorten that up a little bit and then try it out. And if it's still got that whammy where it just wants to kill you when you hit the brake pedal, then I need to get that master cylinder pull it back away from the booster pull that rod out and shorten it just a little bit and give a little bit of play in the pedal all in all i'm happy i mean the installation it's it sucked and i got to tell you that at one point during that test whatever we're going to call that for the first time since i've had this car built i punched it I mean, I put the pedal down to the end of where that gas pedal goes. And I was doing 45 plus miles an hour on the speedometer. And this thing's been pretty accurate on the speedometer. And when it downshifted, it hosed the tires. <laughs> it, it's a monster. I love it. All right, that's going to do it for this episode of Junk Bucket Garage. Hope you like the... Hope you like the goat. I don't know why people call him that. I hate it. I hope you like the Pontiac. We got uh, some more fuel system updates on the Junk Bucket Torino coming up. And stay tuned because one that's kind of near and dear to my heart is the old school stuff. We got that 1930 Model A that we got to pull out of mothballs and just put it on the road so that I can drive it. Because pretty soon I'm going to need groceries and that is my grocery getter. So we'll have that up here on the channel. Make sure you like, shoot me some comments. If you got any questions or any ideas on things I could do or should do or I won't do, I mean, I have to wear pants, so none of that. But let me know. I try to interact with everybody. I'll try to write you back. So let me know if you got any ideas. Make sure you like, make sure you subscribe, tell your friends. I'll see you next time.